As the planet warms, these five dry spell lenient and exceptionally nutritious harvests offer expect more prominent strength throughout the span of mankind's set of experiences. Researchers accept that people have developed in excess of 6,000 different plant species. However, over the long haul, farmers incline toward establishing those with the biggest yields. Today, only three harvests rice, wheat and corn give almost 50% of the world's calories. That dependence on few harvests has made horticulture helpless against bothers, plant-born illnesses and soil disintegration, which flourish with monoculture, the act of developing just a single yield at a time. It has likewise implied missing out on the flexibility different harvests show in enduring dry spell and other catastrophic events. As the effects of the environment emergency become starker, farmers across the world are rediscovering antiquated yields and growing new mixtures that could demonstrate more solid even with dry spell or pestilences, while additionally offering significant supplements. Our food framework isn't prepared for the environment emergency, you hear every one of the measurements like, we've lost 90% of our assortments. It's as of late that I understood the best misery isn't that we've lost that variety. It's that we don't actually realize that we've lost that variety, says Chris Smith, pioneer behind the Utopian Seed Project. Here is a gander at five harvests, past rice, wheat and corn, that farmers across the world are currently filling in order to take care of the planet as it warms. Amaranth From leaf to seed, the whole of the amaranth plant is eatable. Facing eight feet tall, amaranth stalks are finished off with red, orange or green seed filled tufts. Across Africa and Asia, amaranth has for some time been eaten as a vegetable, while indigenous Americans likewise ate the plant's seed, a pseudocereal like buckwheat or quinoa. While amaranth leaves can be sautéed or cooked into a pan-fried food, the seed is generally toasted and afterward eaten with honey or milk. A total protein with every one of the nine fundamental amino acids, amaranth is a decent wellspring of nutrients and cell reinforcements. In the Americas, Spanish colonizers restricted the Aztecs and Maya from developing amaranth when they showed up on the landmass. In any case, the plant kept on developing as a weed and numerous farmers saved amaranth seeds, passing them down for ages, until their relatives were permitted to develop it once more. Today, indigenous farmers in Guatemala, Mexico and the US are teaming up to develop this dry spell safe yield. Like Fonio, an African grain, amaranth is certainly not another yield, however one that is encountering a resurgence as networks adjust to the environment emergency. All that is new was old once, said Matthew Blair, a teacher at Tennessee State University and co-leader of the Amaranth Institute. Amaranth has tracked down its direction into European kitchens, with Ukraine coming in as the yield's biggest maker on the mainland. Fonio For millennia, farmers across West Africa have developed Fonio, a sort of millet that preferences like a somewhat nuttier couscous or quinoa. By and large, Fonio is viewed as Africa's most established developed cereal and was viewed by some as the food of bosses and rulers. In nations like Senegal, Burkina Faso and Mali, Fonio would be served on heavenly days, as at weddings and during the long stretch of Ramadan. Today, consideration is progressively centered around Fonio for its versatility and medical advantages. As the environment keeps on changing, Fonio's dry spell opposition and capacity to fill in unfortunate soil has made it a champion yield in water scant districts. It likewise has significant dietary benefit as a low glycemic, without gluten grain, making it a decent wellspring of amino acids for individuals with diabetes or gluten narrow-mindedness. While Europeans once called Fonio, hungry rice, European organizations are currently producing their own Fonio. The Italian organization Oba Food acquainted Fonio with the EU in December 2018. Furthermore, in the US, the Senegalese culinary specialist Pietiam sources Fonio from the Guide Association source Sahil for his image Yolele, likewise the name of his cookbook celebrating West African food. Cowpeas During the 1940s, more than 5 meters sections of land of cowpeas were filled in the US, the larger part, as their name recommends, for roughage to take care of domesticated animals. In any case, some time before cowpeas, additionally called southern peas or dark-looked-at peas, came to the Americas, they were developed for human utilization in West Africa.
In spite of the fact that cowpea creation has declined in the US in ongoing many years, the yield is colossally significant in a lot of Africa. Nigeria is the world's biggest cowpea maker. As researchers search for elective yields, Blair said it was vital to recognize once where the whole plant is eatable. Albeit generally individuals have for the most part eaten cowpea's seeds, the leaves and pods are likewise a decent wellspring of protein. Since cowpeas are profoundly dry spell open-minded, they're likewise a decent competitor as the environment changes. At Tennessee State University, Blair is essential for a group concentrating on the acquaintance of cowpeas with Latin America, as an option in contrast to beans, similar to pinto and dark beans, with comparable flavor profiles that may before long turn out to be more hard to develop. Taro In the jungles of Southeast Asia and Polynesia, Taro has for quite some time been developed as a root vegetable, much the same as the potato. However, as climbing temperatures undermine development of the yield right at home, farmers in the mainland US are attempting to adjust the tropical lasting to develop as a calm yearly, since it can't endure the cold of US winters. At the Utopian Seed Project in North Carolina, organizer Chris Smith and his group have been exploring different avenues regarding tropical yields, searching for ways of assisting the plants with enduring the colder time of year. Today, they're growing eight assortments of taro, including ones obtained from Korea, the Philippines, Hawaii, China and Puerto Rico. We need to present taro since we genuinely accept that that will give us a safer food framework, Smith says. However, the lovely result is that that likewise permits us to draw in with food varieties that are generally from either indigenous or labora cultivating networks. Also, I think it truly offers those customarily underserved populaces a chance to draw in with the food framework that they don't typically get. Like Fonio, Amaranth and Cowpeas, Taro is certainly not another yield, it's only new to the US food framework. Which is the reason the Utopian Seed Project isn't simply figuring out how to develop taro, yet in addition showing individuals how to cook it. These harvests are simply food sources that are implanted in societies all over the planet such that they're not installed here, Smith said. It takes work to construct that local area and craving for that harvest. Kernza While numerous elective harvests are simply establishes that were developed elsewhere on the planet ages prior, others have been developed explicitly to endure environmental change. During the 1980s, specialists at the Pennsylvania-based Rodale Institute recognized a wheat-like grass called middle-of-the-road wheat grass as an enduring oat crop that could be created as a substitute for yearly grains like wheat. The objective was to limit the ecological effects of grain creation. In 2019, the Kansas-based Land Institute, a non-benefit research association zeroed in on feasible horticulture, presented Kernza, an oat crop created from transitional wheatgrass and reserved to guarantee farmers realize they've purchased seeds from the authority rearing system. In spite of the fact that scientists are as yet attempting to work on the grain's yield, farmers in Minnesota, Kansas and Montana are today developing almost 4,000 sections of land of Kernza. Cultivators promptly grasp the advantages of perennials on their scenes, said Tessa Peters, head of harvest stewardship at the Land Institute, and for those functioning in grain-creating regions, Kernza is exceptionally engaging.